Hello everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. I apologise in advance if I keep getting the reflection on my glasses. Today we are talking about something we come across a lot in recorder playing and many people are very scared of this, but that is no reason to be, namely trills. Trills. They can seem very scary. Where do you play them? How do you play them? Don't your fingers have to move really, really fast and aren't there like a zillion rules? Trills aren't scary, we just have to understand them a little bit. It's important to remember about trills. They are used in many different kinds of music, in Baroque music and earlier and later and in folk music and in all different kinds. I cannot tell you today how to perform them authentically in all of these different styles. And even within one style, namely Baroque, there's a lot of sources that um, happily contradict each other. It has been quoted that there will be as many different styles of trill as people performing the trills. For everyone saying they should be like this, there'll be someone else saying they can be like this. So today I'm going to give you some tools for how to practice trills, about the physical how and some resources to think about it so that you can adapt them to your own musical needs. So if I say something in this video that is contradicted by a particular historical source you have, great, I fully expect it. It would be brilliant if you can share that information below and then we can all learn from it. To provide a starting point, I am going to outline a basic trill that will work in most situations. So we're looking at a trill that is two notes alternating with each other. Trills are used as an ornament. They are decoration for the music and they can have different functions. One function of the trill is harmonic. Imagine you're trilling between two notes on a melody instrument and you're playing with a bass or you're playing within a harmonic structure. One of those notes is going to fit with the harmony, the other is not. That dissonant note is the interesting one. The upper note is dissonant, it doesn't fit with the harmony. The lower note is consonant, it does fit the harmony. And by going back and forth between the two you create this really nice moment of tension before releasing it. <laughs> This was very exciting in Baroque times. So imagine, you would do. You can also have trills that have more of a rhythmic function in maybe in a light dance movement or a fast piece. And these trills also kind of have a melodic function to decorate the melody. So, for example, we have the Vivaldi Concerto in A minor, and I would say in this little passage, the first section is more of a harmonic trill. You're holding on this, uh, this dissonant harmony, and then it goes into more of a kind of rhythmic melodic trill to decorate the line. your teachers tell you to practice scales. So trills can have a harmonic, rhythmic, melodic function and generally they kind of have a combination of all of these. Let's look at the fundamental trill basics. Again my disclaimer, every single one of these can be done in another way and is probably contradicted somewhere but I find that this is the kind of safest most general use trill and I think it's a really good starting point. A trill is two notes alternating. The main note, the one written in your music, is the lower note. The upper note is the one not included in your music and that's the one that sounds dissonant with the harmony. But we are going to start on the upper note. When do we start? We are going to start our trill on the beat. So. And not. Why is this? 
Well, if we're looking at a harmonic trill, by putting the dissonant upper note on the beat, you're emphasizing it slightly, you're emphasizing that dissonance, you're creating a moment of tension, you have this moment of trill, ha 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 ha. And if you start it before the beat, you risk missing out on the dissonance. We are going to tongue the first note and then slur the rest. And how do we end it? It's like the first time you ride a bike, you're going, but how do you actually stop? Just to end with... It's a bit of an anticlimax. Two typical ways are anticipating the final note. Or you can also make a turn ending. You have the... That very first note, by the way, is called an appoggiatura. Da poggiatura trill turn end. Oh, it's actually quite a lot going on in that very short space of time. So we're going to tongue the very beginning, slur the rest until you get to the final note. Tie ta, tie ta. And as you heard, just going. Sounds a bit like a car alarm. Again, we want to have this feeling that it's improvised, that it has its own little life within the note and it's belonging to a larger musical line. What does that actually mean? We can play with fast and slow. So you can start a little bit slower and, ac and accelerando. What do you do if it's a really awkward fingering? are three options. You can just actually play both those fingers. You can take an alternative fingering. It's often more comfortable than however an alternative fingering has a very definite different tone colour than the normal one. Or Sometimes you may not want that difference in tone colour, but I'll leave that up to you. You can also choose to begin with the real fingering and then take a cheap fingering that gives you a slightly wider trill. Now slow, it sounds very crazy, but actually if you build it into the trill it can work. Same for B flat to A. Oh. A question recorder players ask all the time is the A to the G. It's so hard because it's going across the register. For this I do have a cheat. Um, you play the A, then we immediately are going to go to our alternative G, which is everything closed except the thumb. And then we're going to trill with finger number five. You can also tune it slightly by half holding or full holding finger seven. So with the difficult fingerings, there are the three options. Practice the difficult fingering. Take an alternative. Start with the original fingering and then move to an easier but wider trill. Um, I'm just going to name those options and I'm going to leave it up to you to fit them into your music in a way that you deem acceptable. Here are my three main tips for trills. Trills don't have to be super fast. The speed of the trill should kind of be adapted to the speed of your piece. If you're playing a very fast movement, rum, bum, 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 rum, bum, 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 your fingers can be quicker. If it's a beautiful slow movement, your trill can also be a bit slower, otherwise it sounds like... So today we're not going to look at speed, but more about control and relaxation. My second tip is where is the trill going? Often we start a trill, we're trilling. Okay, super fast. Now what? Uh, where's the beat? Okay. Uh. The trill has a shape. And 
I find it really helpful to practice the shape of a trill and also organizing for myself in my head how many times I'm gonna move that finger up and down. Now, that might sound unmusical, but we have to have a starting point somewhere. I find it really helpful to take a short passage, decide my trill is gonna have four movements up and down, and really practice that in all different ways. And we're gonna to get to that. Tip number three, a trill is an ornament. The idea is that it sounds improvised. It sounds like ah, the music is just flowing out of you. But in order to get to that stage, first we need some groundwork. And that's why I'm going to show you some technical exercises. So now we are gonna go into some technical exercises. These are ones that I use to practice my trills and I find them really helpful. Subscribers to my channel may know this exercise already because I talk about it a lot because it's amazing. This one is not only gonna relax your fingers, but will make sure you can control the number of times your finger will go up and down. Essential when trilling. We're gonna go finger by finger. The first is, how are you? How are you? How are you? we're gonna make three sounds. Next finger. Notice how I do it. How are you and how are you? Do that up and down the recorder, all fingers. Don't worry about the real fingerings, we're just looking at the individual movements. When you've done how are you, then we have what is your name? That's four movements, four sounds even. And then we also have five sounds. Where do you come from? making sure that your fingers are relaxed and every single sound is clear and even. It's actually easier to start off fast and just go Whoa, like a runaway train than to make a very controlled diddle, 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 all the way making sure you're not tense, your posture is good, your hand position is good. From this we are going to move into accelerating and decelerating a trill and I'm already going to tell you getting slower is harder than getting faster. So take each finger, um, you can put on your metronome if you like and in four beats we're going to accelerate and then another four beats we're going to decelerate. I already noticed in my own playing. Be careful when you accelerate that you don't push more with the air. That is what we don't want. The trill is independent from your airstream. It can help to organize the movement in groups of four. I love the exercises in Gudrun Hayes advanced recorder technique. She has some trill patterns and the idea is to repeat these on every note, every note of the scale for each finger and I just really like to repeat and repeat them, get a bit lost within it, walk around playing this and just feel all the different degrees of, of how you can play it basically. So the first one is, so we have three beats. Second she gives is the same uh, meter, three beats in the bar, but with a turn. like me have the experience that you only like about 10% of your trills but that's fine and then the third one is the same but two beats a trill with a turn two beats and of course you don't have to play them this fast you could do And the great thing 
about this book by Gudrun is that she gives a lot of examples from the repertoire because of course what we want to do is take these technical exercises and for you to be able to apply them to pieces. So she has a lot of examples for you to be practicing with. That's why I really love this book. So what I would do if I've been practicing my trills like this in exercises out of context, I would take a piece, for example some telemann, and take four bars where you have a trill at the end of the little phrase and see if you can play that from memory. Play it over and over again until you're just playing it automatically and imagine at the start of the phrase you're throwing a ball and at the end it's landing. Let's see if I can do that. For example, of this is that by playing the music before not only do you put it in context you give a bit of a feeling to the longer musical line that's the positive spin the other side is that it gives you something else to worry about than only the trill so <laughs> maybe it's a bit of a distraction where do we go from here in order to put these trills properly into music I would say it's good to educate yourself on the sources. So we have the ever eminent On Playing the Flute by Quance, and this gives um, a lot of information, but also a whole chapter on shakes, which were, by the way, an old word for trills. There is also the book, The Principles Are Playing, I think it's The Flute, Recorder and Oboe by Hotter and this is important to know, Hotter was French and he was writing very much in the French style and Quantz was German, so the two of these had very different styles, so it's also good to read up about those two styles. And actually there are loads and loads of treatises on Baroque ornamentation and Baroque style and taste, because that's what it comes down to basically. In these treatises they also write charts of written out trills, how exactly you should play them, different fingering there's a lot of information. A lot of this information wasn't notated in the score because that was just how you perform music at that time. It was the style and the taste that everybody was immersed in. That is why a lot of Baroque music, for example, won't have all of the ornamentations written in. For a trill, they might only have a little cross above the note music that you can practice. I love the Telemann methodical sonatas by the way. These are I think 12 sonatas and what he did was for each of the big slow movements he wrote um, a very basic version and a really ornamented version and the idea with this was to teach how to ornament. Um, Hotter also wrote The Art of the Prelude, which was like the art of how to improvise a little prelude to a piece you were playing, and he has them in almost every single key, basically little written out ornamentations, and these are fantastic to get into the style, get it in your ear, have something to practice it with. And these ones I have within the Baroque solo book, which is a massive tome of 18th century music. And then some books to practice with. I already mentioned Walter von Hauer's Modern Recorder Player Book 2, and it has a huge comprehensive section on trills. And Gudrun Hayes' The Advanced Recorder Player Book 1, Fingers and Tongue Technique. There is also a great guide to Baroque ornamentation that I don't have right here now. The editor is Mr. Bali, and I'm gonna put the link down in the description below along with all the other stuff. And I will leave you with this parting word of advice. Listen to music. If you want to get into trills and have them sound really authentic, listen to the style of music that you're trying to play. Listen, 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 listen. And that makes it a million times easier than trying to realize some abstract directions from a book. And you know where you can find all this music? YouTube. I hope that this video has been useful. Explaining trills, to be honest, I found it a little bit daunting. Let me know what you think. If you're still here at the end of this video, please subscribe to my channel, Join Team Recorder. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. I'll see you next week. Bye.